So tell me a little bit about uh, your childhood. Okay, I was born in Kayseri, in, uh, in a city, central Anatolia. Uh, it is a very conservative city. And uh, I, I was the first child of my parents. Um, I am always grateful. My dad lost his uh, father very young age, at age seven. And my grandmother raised them alone, uh, he and my aunt. Uh, he was so, he was traditional, conservative, but to us, he has very soft heart and uh, we kind of spoiled a little bit, especially me being a first child. I have, after me, two years later, my sister and one brother, uh, all of us two years apart. Uh, my father is a building engineer. Uh, he graduated very nice school in Istanbul and he, he was a good man, uh, God bless his soul. Uh, I went to school in Kayseri until the last year of high school. Always a very successful student, both all of us. Uh, my dad always very helpful, ready to help anytime. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom, uh, she graduated from uh, elementary and in during that time, Usually they don't allow the girls to go higher education, to be by a wife, they are prepared, they will prepare them. And if we, I, when I think my childhood, it was very nice memories. They all were very nice memories. You know, we had a house in Kayseri, we had a summer house in the rural area. No electricity, no water, mm -hmm. uh, not inside the uh, bathroom or anything. It is totally different life. Uh, but I ate all kinds of fruits and vegetables from the source, you know, from the trees, from the uh, ground. And I, I am very grateful for that, you know, that experience. It is priceless for me. Nobody can experience right now. They are going to farms to pick up apples, uh, strawberries. I raised up all, all with all the trees. You know, <laughs> it was nice. So you were doing organic uh, eating way before. Yeah, always. All, <laughs> yeah, you know, all day we were playing outside and we had uh, swings. We, we had climbing the trees, picking up whatever we want to eat, you know, <laughs> even if the nights are a little bit scary, no electricity, I, <laughs> I say, but it was a nice childhood. Um, I came uh, uh, after a couple years, what, uh, uh, sorry, um, for before my last year in high school, uh, I am always thinking right now. If I stayed in Kaiseri, there will would be no further education for me because there wasn't any university, and my father he will would have never allowed me to go out of the city. You know, it, it, it is impossible. Even if I had relatives in. Istanbul. Uh, fortunately, my brother uh, passed an exam and he had to write to go to Galatasaray in Istanbul, that high school. Yeah. Uh, and they decided something, some financial or political things happened during that time. And my dad decided to move to Istanbul. And I finished high school in Istanbul one year. Uh, it, there is kind of memory, it stuck me uh, inside me. Uh, when I went to that high school in Istanbul, I was the 
child from rural rural area is good. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected I am successful. I would have been successful. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what why they are thinking because all my uh, education, uh, school life, I was the most successful person in the class, and. <laughs> And not only students, teachers as well. And I ended up changed their mind. Uh, I am not the stupid country girl. I am the one, uh, the successful one. And I wanted to be an architect, but because maybe I got inspiration from my father, you know, he was building engineer and then I really liked that kind of job, but he didn't want me to. He made a point, if you are going to university, if you want to, you have to be doctor or dentist. Otherwise, no, <laughs> no way. Just doctor was the only option? And that, or dentist, you know, you can work in a medical area as a woman, but in building uh, engineering or that kind of, they are men work, you know, you can't. Interesting. <laughs> oh, it does. And um, during the exam that uh, university entrance exam, I remember I thought, okay, how many questions if I miss, I will I will not go to Maybe. medical school, but my first choice, oh, and I can't go outside of Istanbul, you know, two medical schools. I wrote both of them, first and second. Others, all architecture. And I was thinking, okay, can I miss a couple questions and then I can miss that bus and then go to architecture or something. <laughs> But I didn't have that kind of courage that time, and I went. But, you know, I fell in love somehow. I liked it. Six years, it was nice. I'm going to interfere just for those um, American friends of ours that don't know about the education system in Turkey, the university entrance exam. Could you just say a few things around how it worked with the... Um, okay. You know, the exam, the points that you get and the list that you make that allow okay. you to... Uh, in Turkey, you, you, after you graduate from high school, you are going to university, not the college. You don't need a bachelor degree to go to veterinary, dental, law school or medical school. You can go, but medical school, six years. And here uh, in the United States, uh, there are a couple uh, schools like that, straight from the high school. But in Turkey, it works that way. You know, uh, you don't need to get a bachelor degree. You are being doctor after six years of medical school, right um, after the college you can start. It is different. And we, are, we were so young, I am thinking, but six years you got education <laughs> so you got in a school that you didn't really uh wasn't your choosing but you did end up uh falling in love with it you said yeah especially my specialty you know uh i'm always thinking if i go back to medical school again i would have cho chosen uh, ophthalmology again i loved it during all 25 years i loved it you know um other than that it is the education do you want to know something personal thing about yeah i guess going to medical school becoming a doctor these are rather major uh commitments in life so i guess what i'm always interested in uh, are stories that have stayed with you um mm -hmm. You know, you must have encountered so much either in your with yourself as you were going through either the education or the professional years, but also with uh, the people that you served. Um, if you have any stories that stuck with you, that for the medical area, 
for anything really okay uh, um, general you, life i think general life um for medical after i finished my uh, residency uh, after we came here i didn't close my cell phone uh, it was used still my mom has been using that cell phone we moved here and then she was telling me handan your patients are calling you know they are asking about me if i am going back or they are waiting for me for their second eye surgery that kind of thing you know it gives me some satisfaction that uh, you know i i am successful not only uh, practically or something but i left something to people's mind or uh, they remembers me as a good doctor trusted me you know it is the thing you want to achieve in your life you know uh, family life business life or, or anything uh, you have to be human and then you have to be liked you not only success but i want them to remember me as a good person mm -hmm. help them they appreciate what i did for them it is the most important thing or whenever i went to turkey uh, you know i visited my old friend hospital uh, it took sometimes hours to go uh, to finish you know everybody wants to talk everybody shakes your hand or hug you or something uh, still uh, it makes my eyes uh, watery you know uh, it it is the satisfaction yes i did something good you know in my life i some people people remember me whenever they remember me they remember good things not bad things it is the satisfaction i did something good in my life uh, so what i hear you talk about is the relationship aspect yeah. of your profession so not only the technical part but no the building of a relationship that lasts even long after you leave the profession. Yes, yes. Uh, this summer, my mom got some calls still. It, wow. it was... Uh, How many yes, years after? 15. 15, wow. Yes, yes. It was, uh, you know, also, I am kind of person, I try to keep my relationships alive you know, all my friends in Turkey and uh, or here, you know, I try to keep in touch. I remind them whenever I went, I make or make organizations to get together. Actually, they are kidding. If you don't come, we will not see each other, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they are busy in their regular life. And uh, even if they want, they don't want they don't have time to get together, but if I am there a certain time, they feel obligated <laughs> to get together. And it is nice. Also, uh, my daughters, they are always, uh, how you can keep all these relationships? <laughs> but they benefited for everything, you know, as a doctor. Also, my father, he always appreciated. My sister uh, also became a doctor. She's a pediatrician. My husband, radiologist, was. And my sister's husband, doctor. And my father, always grateful. You know, older age, we took care of them very easily. And they understood how important to have someone in your family, in medical area. Mm -hmm. uh, it is scary for most of the people, you know, to handle this kind of things, but they didn't have that trouble. And I am grateful for all people who helped me uh, during the diseases or anything. It, it was nice, you know. <laughs> 
So uh, I hear uh, something in what you're saying that uh, could also be slightly a cultural thing, especially when you mentioned that your daughters are surprised how, you know, you have so many relationships and that you yeah. prioritize them to the extent that you do. Would you yeah. have anything to say about your sense or observation of how maybe people do relationship differently uh, in your country of origin, Turkey, and then here in America? Uh, you know, actually, my husband wasn't like that. Okay. You know, and uh, always my friends, my relationship. Yeah, he has a couple friends, but that's why he was so picky or I don't know. It is the character, you know, so it's and they see the difference. The yeah. Mm -hmm. And during the college visits for my older daughter, we went to Philadelphia and then I have a medical school friend working there. We met her and uh, John Su, my old daughter, asked me later, really, you didn't see each other for 20 years. She couldn't leave. You know, it wasn't like that. Like we were just left the school a couple of weeks ago and then we are together again. And I told them always, I am telling them, uh, please keep relationship alive. It is not easy to have friends, mm -hmm. to find a friend, you know, don't waste it. It is important, uh, you know, uh, and sometimes some effort to keep that relationship alive. Uh, it is, and it, you know, I am. I can be friend anyone, not only doctors. You know, my helpers, my in Turkey, you know, my other people, nannies. Uh, I am. I am a people's person. <laughs> Clearly so. And I would say maybe there's something there uh, more than just you being a relationship person, but a grasping of the importance of people in our lives. I don't know if you're familiar with a nurse from Australia. I can't recall her name. She wrote a book about, she worked hospice many years and mm -hmm. wrote about uh, the five major res um, regrets people have at their deathbed. So sort of mm -hmm. universal themes she observed over her career uh, that would come up as people were, you know, going uh, towards the yeah. end. And one of them uh, is about relationships. Pretty much everybody wished they mm -hmm. had given more time to their relationships. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would say you're onto something there. A very, okay. very important in terms of life. When we're on our deathbed, we don't necessarily think as much, uh, you know, about how much money I made or could I have worked more. But relationships seem to yes. um, seem to be what comes to our mind. It gives you happiness, not the money. People, you know. Uh, they give you I, I, I believe that way uh, I don't disagree at all <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to say a little something uh, let me see we started I think a quarter after so do you want to say a little more about your life here um, your uh, maybe here? you know I worked as a uh, ophthalmologist 25 years and we decided to come it was my husband's dream to come to the US and work here he insisted me to take the exams and everything but I said no I, um, I have two daughters they were 8 and 11 then we, 7 and 11 when we came here he found the job as a assistant he did his residency again it is kind of long story i don't want to explain everything but um, at the beginning of my career i was um, targeting to become a professor or something you know uh, pay, uh, preparing papers on getting ready for that kind of path but after marriage, 
My husband somehow didn't like it. And then I gave up. Uh, you know, I, the reason I thought, okay, if I struggle with my marriage and I do cho choose that path, at the end, what is the um, happiness? You know, I have to find the happiness in my family, mm -hmm. with my children, with my husband. Okay, it is not important. I am satisfying with my job. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not necessary. And that is why I didn't want to be, uh, want to try to, to practice here. Because in that case, we, we both working, who will take care of children, you know? I'm wondering if they would have been like that if I had worked to residency, all those kind of crazy things. Okay, I chose, it is kind of sacrifice, but I never regret it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe I satisfied with my job, you know, uh, long years I did practice and I got retired. It's okay. And I had to be at home, uh, to do their needs, whatever they need, because my husband was so busy working, studying, <laughs> all goals. You know, it was it was hard, and I never regretted the the, uh, the point we we are now. You know, it is okay. Uh, I I never regretted, and. Here, uh, we had a good start in St. Louis uh, because now in Michigan, it is kind of, we all live rural areas. It is not rural, but suburban and far away each other. It is not easy. And uh, in St. Louis, it was kind of international community. I found a couple of Turkish people as well. But uh, the school system we chose, the city, it was kind of international. 70% of uh, children in elementary school were foreigners, you know. Uh, and they have very good, uh, very strong ESI program. It had my especially younger uh, daughter. It, it was so helpful. And also teachers or in that community, they try to help us, you know. And in St. Louis, the distances are very not far. Lots of activities going on. And it was a good adjustment for us from the big city, so from Istanbul. And we stayed there. We, I found Turkish people. Uh, through school system, I found some international friends, you know, Indian, Asian, uh, Hispanic, uh, we get together. School made us some, uh, try to us assimilate to the community. And then it helped, I think. And I attended some uh, English courses. Uh, to improve my English, I I became friends a couple with a couple teachers there. And, uh, How much I, English did you speak before you came? I, you know, as a medical, it was very enough. But conversation, especially on the phone, it is night. It was nightmare. <laughs> uh, and my younger daughter, she was she knew only yes or no or I am that was it my older one she was speaking she, she was good but uh, it's you know so much quicker though yeah uh, three months later my younger one uh, she's like American you know if they don't see me they don't understand she's for <laughs> do, do your children make fun of you and your of language course. of course but is um, my older daughter, she's always challenging with me. You know, I was kind of her, um, her, uh, she was competitive with you a little? Very competitive. Mm -hmm. And 
I was so happy to say her, Jansu, you are, you are now speaking English way better than me. You know, you can understand, you can help me right now, you know, because I am the strong one, I am the uh, important one. Now I gave her an opportunity. You are better than me in that area. <laughs> you know? It was nice. And later, one, one and a half year later, he found another residency here in Michigan and we came here. And that is what, when I understood what was the difference, because here, mostly uh, white American in that city, you know, there is no diversity. If we would have come directly to here, Maybe they would have been alienated by, with the students, you know, it would have been hard. Mm -hmm. But uh, here... What was the name of the city you first moved to? I'm Missouri, St. Louis. St. Louis, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And before I came here, I found the Turkish community already, and I involved them they had me here to figure out places where I have to be and school system we chose and my husband started to work and uh, you know I I am the I was the one uh, doing things at home bank uh, car care they, I learned everyone <laughs> the most important one, I started library book club, attending to library book club, and it helped me a lot. Uh, improving my English, uh, being relationship, I had uh, American friends from there, and uh, I lived in a subdivision, my neighbors, uh, we had gatherings, things. Maybe it depends on me a little bit, you know, I was. I wanted to be involved, mm -hmm. and they allowed me to. They tried to understand more me, mm -hmm. and I was the one as an exam example of Turkish woman. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know. Sometimes they are imagining like Arabic countries or something. But it was always my goal. First, my children they have to talk Turkish. You, know, I don't. I didn't want them to forget. Uh, it, is, it is a shame for me if they forget, you know, one language. Why? They have to learn. They have to speak. And I try to give them that sense, you are bicultural. You are representing at the same time Turkey. You can teach uh, your uh, friends or teachers about things, uh, your country, your past, you know, or your relationship, uh, food always. <laughs> I have a question for you because I grew up um, biculturally as well. My mom was German, uh, but oh. she moved to Turkey. So my father was Turkish. So I grew up with a Turkish father, German mom in Turkey. Okay. And I personally always identified almost 100% Turkish, even though my looks don't always, people typically say you don't look Turkish, but I identify it because I thought that the culture within which you grow up mm -hmm. is so much more powerful of than course. the um, birth of origin culture. So how did that work out with your daughters? As far as you can, I mean, I should ask them, but I'm asking you, what in your uh, opinion, is My there older one identity <laughs> you know um during the teenage year it is different especially for my older one she wants to be american she wants to be seen as an american sure. you know it is i don't know why she, she feels that way um, she lives here <laughs> yeah my younger one she looks more American other than her physical features uh, because she's uh, talking Turkish but with an accent. You know, she's mostly grew up here. She was uh, seven years old, now she's 22. 
but she's the one surprisingly uh, teaching people uh, some Turkish words and she has a couple friends uh, choose some Turkish name for themselves you know I have Mehmet <laughs> you know, we are, and it is funny. She's, uh, they are listening Turkish music, asking me. <laughs> uh, we made mantı together in my house, and then I made them Which Turkish, Turkish coffee. ravioli for those that don't know. Yeah, and I Turkish coffee. I read the fortune. They, they loved it. <laughs> I I said something. I am not a fortune reader, but so again, for those people that don't know, after you, the Turkish coffee is done in a little cup, like an espresso cup. But there's a lot of um, tortu. What is tortu? Uh, tor um, um, mm -hmm. Lots of leftovers in the bottom. Anyway, when you finish the cup, you turn it around, and then you wait for that leftover part to uh, flow down. And after a while, when your cup cools you lift it up and there's a lot of patterns and the way the fortune telling works is a little bit like the ink blot so you project into the images you see and then you write the story uh, for the person who's listening yeah and uh, the, they are trying to talk to me in turkish you know her friends it, it is so nice uh, and it goes, later in medical school my older one she kind of represent both country and some of her friends too. They are learning to do um, some app in their phone and then they are trying to at least write me or tell me a couple of words in Turkish. I am so happy. They, because it is kind of a special thing. You are special, you know, as a bicultural. You know, uh, you are different than other people, and then you have more qualities uh, if you uh, compare the other people. And well, I you traveled to a lot. And, uh, and underline what I heard you say. So you're saying um, that being bicultural or, a, uh, or an immigrant is something that makes you richer. And maybe we can think of the then entire. American culture is mm -hmm. richer because it is uh, made of so many immigrants. Maybe yeah. what the richness of the country comes from its diversity as yeah. opposed to the other way around. Yeah, and then uh, from the beginning, I admire the thing. You know, everybody is different background. There is no real American life, right? If you go three generations, they came from some other places. Right. And but the most important thing, they all feel like American. They uh, they are very successful this assimilation, and they all feel that flag. They believe that freedom. Even How about if, you, did you have a moment in your life where you felt, hmm, I think I'm half American now, or I'm Turkish American as opposed to just a um, woman living in America? You know, I like to be here and then that, uh, feel that freedom. You know, it is not like Europe. When you go to Europe as a Turkish, you are, they treat your, you like second class or something. You mm -hmm. always feel this, even if as, uh, as a doctor, I went there, you know, for a short time for meeting. But here, they wonder about you. They are not judging you, mostly, you mm. know, uh, mostly. If they are, are they have a, a little bit education, if they are educated as, especially, they don't treat you, you are foreign or something. No, mm. you are one of them, mostly. They are curious about you. And I feel very comfortable, but, uh, you know, I came here for age 44 or 46. Uh, it is hard to believe that I am American that sure. way, you know. Sure. Uh, I really like to be here, 
to be part of this country. I am trying to do, you know, I will work uh, election, this election, upcoming election. You know, I, I try to do my duties as a community or something, but I don't know what will happen if I have to choose one of them. <laughs> I don't know. It, it is hard for the six year. I, I, you know, I love my country too. How I often love do you go back? Hmm? How often do you go back? Uh, every summer, sure. A couple of years, uh, in a year, you know, during winter times, mostly I am going to visit my mom. This year, everything is different, but uh, last couple years, I try to do two visits every year. Yeah. Did you want to at all talk about uh, losing your husband and what that was like and any, um, I mean, most of us will at some point experience losing. One of us goes first, right? If we long lo live long enough, it's very rare that a couple, they both die at the same time. So your experience, of course, was strikingly untimely and early and traumatic. But what would you... Uh, would you have any either words of wisdom or how you manage to um yeah survive and be yourself you know uh, it was fortunately a sudden, a sudden thing you know we knew from the beginning actually he was a radiologist i like i said he uh, figured out he has a cancer he found out uh, they didn't believe him no no you didn't have or something uh, from the beginning, we were thinking it was a small thing, but uh, lung cancer is not a small thing. And we uh, fought for years. But during those years, I never thought we will come to an end. You know, we lived very normal life. We traveled more together. And he did work until the last six months and oh. yeah he, fortunately the target therapy thing it worked very well you know uh, chemotherapy was hard for the beginning but uh, two years with that drug it was good but later it turned out more metastasis and everything my husband wasn't like me. He was more um, pessimistic. Is it English or is it true? Pessimistic. Mm -hmm. You know, he was seeing the class half empty. I was seeing half full. Mm -hmm. uh, we were completing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, it was his goal to come here to become an American citizen. And after we got our green card, he was like, okay, mm -hmm. now we are all independent. You don't need to be with me. Whatever happens to me, you can be here. You can stay still here because you have that card right now. And uh, he was very happy about uh, our daughter, their accomplishment, education. Uh, older daughter chose medicine. They were talking a lot uh, uh, about the diseases and everything. You know, after 15 years of practice, I lost some of my knowledge, mm -hmm. but he was still teaching her things. Uh, he was, you know, at the very last minute, we decided um, last month's hospice because there wasn't any therapy. And I was grateful because everybody was with him in a comfortable way. Uh, we said goodbye. Uh, he didn't want anybody knows during four years because of the pity, you know, people feel. 
uh, sorry for him or something. No, and I am grateful we did very, we had a very normal life, you know, and nobody believed it. You were traveling a lot. What, what, how it happened, you know? He was so normal. Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't want to leave. I'm sure he didn't want to leave uh, sick, you know, seeing people see him sick, people pity him, you know, sorry for him. I'm sure he didn't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, it happened at the last fast. He didn't suffer a lot. And my sister and her family were here. Her, his brother were here. Uh, now, I am thankful that I dealt with everything alone because of he was busy. He was so busy, he couldn't do anything like how to handle house, how to handle other things, you know, taxes or lots of things you have to handle. And it was me always. He didn't know anything about it. You know, he was earning money and then gives him the money. Okay, hand on, you are handling it. I am grateful I did because I didn't feel I am lost. Mm -hmm. I knew what I had to do. Mm -hmm. How and fortunately, my daughters, they are old enough. But, and um, financially, we are somehow secure. Mm -hmm. And he's so, he, I'm sure he's so happy in that situation. You know, we don't have any trouble after him. He right. always says. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I felt I can't stay home or uh, think or all memories. I try to remember always good memories, mm -hmm. but okay, Hanna, you have to do something. It will not be any, any medical thing, but okay, let's go realist. <laughs> now I am happy. years you became a realtor. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, maybe I turned back to the high school you know, trying to be architect, I am evolving uh, from another point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Somehow. Not building yeah. them, but helping people find them. <laughs> yes. You know, I, it is, uh, it is so fun. It is so fun to look at. Uh, maybe I didn't meet very mean people. <laughs> Sometimes it can be, or uh, you can do it together, you know, some people. Oh, okay, we are not fit together. You can say some people like that, but I didn't meet that point right now. Mm -hmm. Usually I am helping people like my friend, like I am looking for the houses or if I am selling, it is like it is my house or I am buying for myself. I, I, I am picky. I like the job and I am learning a lot, totally different area. Mm -hmm. It is harder than it looks. <laughs> it is hard. And 24 7, if you do mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of job. Different kind of being on call. <laughs> yes. I, I, oh, no, I can't do this. You have to restrict your hours. Otherwise, you are, they consume you. <laughs> It is, but it is a nice job. I like being, helping people and make them happy. It mm -hmm. is nice. Mm -hmm. Other than medical thing, oh, sorry. No. <laughs> so as we come towards the end of our Sohbet Söyleşi, what is the mm -hmm. best translation of that? I have to think about it. Our chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In feel, does it? Um, Anything I didn't ask you about that you would want to mention? Anything you would want to share? Uh, about anything of importance to you that you feel you didn't get to? And maybe 
you'll watch it later and then it will yeah uh you know in this country like we talked about diversity different culture the bicultural uh, uh and we talked about my husband and i i am proud you know he is the most honest person in this world i met you know he never lied he never do harm anybody any living thing and he's so thoughtful uh, I am sometimes getting angry, shouting. He never shouts. Uh, I am trying to tell he's human, and he was a saint. Yeah, you know, in any culture or in any religion, I hope everyone realizes that the most important thing being a good human. All cultures or all religion tries to teach you. You have to be a good person, not harmful to another, uh, other creatures. Uh, don't lie, don't steal. You know, it is the most important thing I am trying to teach my kids. You have to be good human. You have to be remembered as a good person. Think about it. Don't lie or don't steal. Don't make harm to others to uh, benefit for your own you know uh, I hope people get that point you know in any age you, we have to teach our children especially during this time uh, lots of things going on in this country and uh, always diversity big problem I hope people understand that we have to un try to understand each other and try to be a good human. I, <laughs> well, thank you so much. I almost like this call so much. I just want to uh, share this one. Thank you so much. Çok teşekkürler. İyi bir başlangıç oldu. Okay. Görüşmek üzere. Bye.